Self-test. What obligations do recipients of Justice Department funding have to provide services to LEP persons? This self-test provides a series of scenarios and questions that will help you understand the responsibility that a recipient of federal financial assistance has in providing services to persons with limited English proficiency. The first scenario, Sisters House. Sisters House, a nonprofit organization, receives funding from the Office on Violence Against Women, a Justice Department component, to operate a domestic violence shelter. Ms. Turgenev, a recent Russian immigrant who knows little English, seeks the shelter's services. What should the shelter do? Here is the answer. Under Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the federally funded shelter has an obligation to take reasonable steps to provide Ms. Turgenev with meaningful access to the services it offers to any of its clients, whether the clients are proficient in English or not. Determining what is reasonable in this instance requires working through the four-factor analysis. Whether the service population consists of a significant number of Russian-speaking LEP persons, whether the shelter has frequent contacts with Russian-speaking LEP persons seeking services, whether the particular services that Ms. Turgenev is seeking are important, and whether the shelter has resources to provide her with language access services. If Ms. Turgenev is in an emergency situation, such as fleeing an abusive domestic situation, one might characterize the service she is seeking as extremely important, a factor in the four-factor analysis that would oblige the shelter to provide language assistance services to Ms. Turgenev. Ideally, the shelter's intake coordinator, acting in accordance with the shelter's language assistance plan on which she received training, would immediately contact a qualified interpreter to explain to Ms. Turgenev the applicable laws related to domestic violence and the options she has for requesting a restraining order. The shelter may also need to provide an interpreter to allow Ms. Turgenev to participate in the shelter's programming. The second scenario, the Troy Police Department. Officer Stanley of the Troy Police Department, which receives funding from the Office of Community Oriented Policing Services, or COPS, responded to a reported robbery of a small grocery. No one was injured. The Korean proprietors were hard to understand. To help with filing his report, he asked a neighbor to interpret. Would this be all right? Here is the answer. The Troy Police Department, as a recipient of COPS funding, should have a written language assistance plan that is consistent with the Justice Department's guidance. Under the four-factor analysis, the Police Department's response to a crime scene is an important public service. If Officer Stanley arrived and concluded that he was in the midst of an emergency, needing, for example, to know the medical condition of an injured person or information related to a fleeing criminal, then he could reasonably ask anyone in the area to interpret. In this instance, the robbery is over and there is no emergency. Officer Stanley should be able to access reliable interpretation services from the police department, whether the interpreter is a colleague who comes to the crime scene or a vendor that interprets over the telephone. There are good reasons for not relying on the neighbor to interpret. Even if Officer Stanley had good reason to believe that the neighbor's primary language is Korean, he has no basis for knowing whether the neighbor is a competent interpreter. The skill to speak a foreign language is a different skill than interpreting accurately. Moreover, there is a possibility that the neighbor may have a conflict of interest. The third scenario, juvenile court. Mr. and Mrs. Montez, who are Spanish-speaking LEP persons, attended the first appearance in juvenile court of their 16-year-old son, John. English is John's primary language, and the court receives funding from the Department of Justice. Does a court have to provide an interpreter to Mr. and Mrs. Montez? Here is the answer. Yes, as the Justice Department understands Title VI, the court does have to provide an interpreter 
to Mr. and Mrs. Montez so that they may follow the court proceedings. Even though John is not an LEP person, his parents are, and they have the right in these circumstances to have an interpreter. Although John may be responsible for his own actions, as long as he is a minor, his parents are also responsible for him. There may be important information bearing on their son's charge that they could not communicate to the court. Without an interpreter, the court may have also missed important information related to John's case that only the parents could provide. For more information on the obligations that courts have to provide language access services, see the August 2010 Letter of Assistant Attorney General Thomas Perez of the Civil Rights Division to State Court Administrators, which appears in the Resources section following this presentation. This concludes the self-test. What obligations do recipients of Justice Department funding have to provide services to LEP persons?